Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 162 of Pro No Coders Office Hours. I'm your host, Tanya. We're here with members Thomas and Jay and Maya Kim. We're going to get started in just a moment, but I want to let you know that we do office hours every day of the week, Monday through Friday, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific and Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific time. And what it is, is we invite our members, our subscribers to the office hours to come on our Zoom, which we broadcast live. Um, and then they can ask us any bubble question they want. And we do our darndest to give them an answer back. If we can't, we will suffer with you. But uh, most of the time we get it right. Um, in addition to office hours, we are launching on Friday this thing called the Pro No Coders Vault. So if you would like to know when it's available to purchase the vault, which is a compilation of, of bubble video tutorials, and uh, what we're doing different is we're making it highly searchable, and we're making it so that you don't waste a lot of time watching video that you don't need. Um, so you can go through and you can highlight over the different uh, timestamps that we've created so you can find your answers faster. And we're being very careful making this very usable. If you want to know when that's ready, when you can subscribe to the vault, go ahead and go to pronocoders.com slash vault and enter your email here. We'll send you an email on Friday as soon as it's ready. And we also have a great deal. You're going to get a... a a significant discount um, if you sign up on Friday. In addition to the vault, we have coming up this evening at 6 p.m. Pacific time, Justin of Pro no Coders is going to be showing us how to uh, do a messaging user interface using the new Flexbox editor. Uh, so we are going to be broadcasting that to YouTube, also on Facebook and Twitter um, and Twitch. So if you want to watch live, um, please do join that or you can go and find it after it'll be available for the replay. We will be accepting questions live from YouTube. So if you go on youtube.com to the Prono Coders channel, once we're live, go ahead and watch it and you can ask your questions and we'll respond there and also in the live. I think that's it. I think I think I covered everything. So let's go ahead and get started now. And we'll just check in with Thomas. Do you have any questions today? Nope. Nope. Jay, how about you? Not a specific question, but a general, general question. Okay, let's do it. Um, I would like to build something similar to how Active Campaign lets you drag and drop a flow. All right, and you've used the drag and drop um, plugin before, right? Uh, yes, but honestly, I do not feel like I have good understanding of it at all. Okay, <laughs> and so what's your what's your general question then? So with the drag and drop, even with that, like you still have to have the logic connected to you know make each block do something to the next block. Is that just conditions? Yep, it's just like, yeah, so it, it's, you're probably going to want to go abstract a level, right? So that you can, uh, when you drag and you drop an element on there, it creates something in the database. And then if you're dragging it and dropping it between other things, then you, you'll want to modify the thing before it and the thing after it potentially. But yeah, that's that, that's just logic. The the functionality, the drag and drop functionality exists. Um, most people I know use the use the plugin for that. And then it would just be when you when you actually drop it, that's when you would have the different um, actions. And then and then the element that gets dropped should be attached to something in the database. So ostensibly, if you're dragging it, you know from one place on the screen to the other, when you drop it, you create something in the database that's attached to that thing that then you can make other things happen with, like on a save button, for instance. So I'm trying to build an approval flow so that, okay. a, piece, so that an opt, so a piece of information is moving through a system and getting looked at and reviewed by other people, other users. So. So in terms of the database for that, it seems like it would have an order 
like a number, first step, second step. But then every time you drag it and drop it, you're going to have to change all the steps behind it. You know, if you drag nine to position one, everything else gets moved back a slot. Does that, is that how it should work? Yeah, so there's, it's, there's an interesting, there's a top shelf, a top shelf template actually. And the way that they do it is um, they use a mathematical formula so that your, so that your steps are not one, two, three, four. They're like fractions, right? Um, and that way you can accommodate pretty much infinitely uh, different changes around. And it just changes, it just makes sure that the, that the thing that you moved between two other things, that its order is between the two other things. Okay. Right? And that way you don't have to have a workflow that goes through and reorders everything. You just make sure that it fits in that order. Um, and then the order itself, are you following what I'm saying? I can kind of show it. Um, yeah, um, I have a general, I have a gist of what you're saying. I get about the fractions. <laughs> yeah, so there's, let me see. It's probably all the way at the bottom of the page. I really, Maria, if you're watching, please fix this. Because um, this extended scrolling on the page to find stuff is not it. Come on. <laughs> is that it? Is that the end? Am I at the end? Okay. There's one of these will show. Shelf. I'm um, probably better just creating a new app. Sandbox mid November 2021. I'll start from the top shelf elements template. Okay, so the drag and drop list here, and you can look at these workflows. And do you remember what I was doing, Jay? Because I'm having one of those, I'm, I mean, premature senior moments, I would call it. About reordering items uh, in the drop. Yeah, like, yeah, like the reordering with the, with the formula. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So this is the formula. How did you get to where you are right now? How did I get to where I am right now? So yes. there's a there's a template called Top Shelf in the um in the bubble.io slash template section, the marketplace mm -hmm. for templates. Yeah. So I just started an app with that template. And then once you have an app that started with that template, you can copy and paste into your actual app. And so that's that's what I did here. So I just went to, I didn't do this on camera. I did this a long time ago, but bubble.io slash templates. And then you look for top shelf and then it'll be this one. And then make sure that you like have it available, install it or start an app from it. And then once you start that app from it, you can take um, this stuff and you can copy and paste, like you can right click and copy with workflows and paste uh, it in your own app. Great. Thank you. Yep. And then the, um, this formula that they're doing is when drop area below this widget has a group dropped on it. So when you drop a group on it, so let's say I'm going to take this group and I'm going to drop it up here, like at the top. And then uh, what it's doing is, or let's say I'm going to take this one and drop it in between two things. It'll make more sense that way. So this is just saying the group holder widget below's number. So looking at the thing that's below where we're dropping it, and then we're going to add the current cells widgets order number divided by two. 
right? And this gives you fractions. So when you actually preview this on the page, so first let's go look at our app data here. App data. Let's go let's get all widgets here. So they're not giving us any. Yeah. So here, this is a widget thing. So we need to add some widgets in order to work with. So if I go into the app data, into all widgets, just a new thing, um, widget one and order one description price 10. I don't know what it's uh, ID number, we'll just do one. So we'll create a thing and I'll just create like three of these things. Widget two, Question two, order number two, ID number two, price. One more. Three. 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 There we go. So now we have a little bit of data. So we can see that we have these three widgets and we look in here and we can see the IDs and we can see the order number here. So this is the part that's going to change because of this workflow here where we're saying the group holder widgets number, widget below's number, and then the current cells widget order divided by two. This is how, when I go here and I say, okay, I wanna drop widget three into number two spot. So widget three is now a number two spot. Let's look at the database and see how that changed the order. So it didn't make it number two, it put it between one and two. So it's 1.5. Yeah. Interesting. And you can, um, the way to get familiar with what's happening is just understand what's happening in each of these workflows, like study these workflows and you'll start to understand how that part's working. Um, and then this is working because it comes with the draggable elements plugin. That's the other missing piece in case you've never played with drag and drop before, you have to get the draggable elements um, plugin, which is free on the plugins page. Let's give you a place to start. Yes, thank you. You're welcome, no problem. All right, um, any other questions? I don't really have any other questions right now. <laughs> That's okay. I've got a couple of them from the Facebook group that I want to tackle. So Good. no problem. So I'd, I'd first, I'd like to say thank you to all of the, all of the pro no coders, uh, Facebook group members. You've been asking some great questions in our group and I really appreciate it. So the first one is from yesterday. Jesus was asking how to create an invite only feature similar to the one Clubhouse had. And I clarified in the comments that uh, Jesus did not mean using the contacts in the phone because I had someone else ask that question in one of the other groups um, months ago. But what he was after was like being able to take somebody's contacts in their phone and generate invitations to the people who had iOS on like that match that. That's not what we're after here. In this particular case, we wanna have a user be able to invite other users using um, a special link and keeping track of who's invited who and who's taken up invitations and things like that. So his clarification here doesn't need to access the address book. It can be a tab on the user's profile page with a list of the links or invite codes that are available. So let's 
let's do something like that, Jesus. So I'm going to use the sandbox. And what we want to do is we want, um, I'm just separate this out as a different thing in the database. We'll call this invitation. And an invitation will have an owner. That's the person who's doing the inviting and we'll attach it to the user. And we'll have um, the, let's, let's go back to the question. Yeah, so restrict the number of invitations that are sent at any given time. For example, load six invitations per user so they can send them out. If the user doesn't have the invitation link or code, they can't sign in. And then list of the links or invite codes that are available. So do we want, let's just survey the gallery here who's watching at the moment. Do we want to use codes for this or just send the invitations to emails or what do you think? Are you asking all of us? Yeah. Codes. Codes, using codes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so invitation code, make this a text. And and then uh, used yes or no. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an invitations page. And we're going to create a button here. It's going to say create invitation code. And then we'll make a repeating group. And there'll be a of type invitation. And we're going to do a search for invitations where the owner is the current user, user, and, uh, and we'll also specify that they're not used yet, that used equals no. And then we'll probably have, let's just do some tabs here. This one, we can call this pending invitations. And then accepted invitations. And what we can do is change a custom state so that if I'm on pending, I'm looking at the ones that are no. And if I click on accepted invitations, then it's going to change uh, this to the condition, which will be when invitations <laughs> accepted is yes then the data source will change and we'll do a search for invitations where the owner is the current user and the used equals yes. That way we can keep track of both because one of the things that a lot of apps will do is give you rewards based on how many people have actually accepted the invitation and signed up. So we'll keep track of both. Now in the repeating group, we're gonna to wanna to know 
The current cells invitations uh, invitation code. And maybe we'll keep track of the date that it was issued. Date formatted as here. All right. And then when we create an invitation code, we're going to have to be careful not to create more than six pending invitations at any given time. So what we'll do here is we'll create a new thing. The new thing will be an invitation. The invitation code, I would do some kind of combination. Um, so maybe I would do the current users unique ID truncated to three or from truncated from not two truncated from end to three and then append pen calculate formula generate random string length of characters should be three use Why letters didn't you just generate a random string with more numbers you know it it does it probably doesn't matter i'm just thinking that it's uh so if we generate a random string i guess okay so what i should do here is probably search for invitation codes uh -huh. so because I need this to be, I need this to not match any other yeah, invitation right. code. So maybe I'm setting the slug and that's what's happening. But I'm like wondering what if, what if by some chance we end up with, with a, a string that does match something in there, they're just gonna get an error. Maybe they just try again. It's, it wouldn't be their fault. Right. But if someone sent them the invitation code, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't be able to get it. Or maybe we should just increment. Yeah, do a random string and then increment code. it from there. Or a random bunch of numbers. So I just have to create one in the database first and then we can increment from there. But when I'm doing want an invitation code with like three digits, you want to see five digits. You want to feel special. Right. <laughs> so yeah, so I'll just start it at like a hundred thousand. Yeah, that'll make you look very popular. <laughs> All right. So so the invitation code will do a search for hi Chris. Oh, welcome. We're working on something. Um, we're we're working on creating an invitation system at the moment. But did you have questions today? Uh, I do have one. If there's time at the end, it's uh should be pretty simple. But just extra set of eyes might be helpful. Okay, awesome. We will definitely have time. No worries. So we'll do a search for invitations. Uh, Might have to send this to the back end to be safe, though. You mean generate your codes in the back end? Yeah, just because I don't want to give. Um, we'll see. So, invitation code. Because you don't want to expose this in the source. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. 
I'm just thinking. So search for invitation last items invitation code converted to number because I made the invitation code a text. Yeah, I like this idea, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. So we'll take the current user's unique ID. Uh, unique ID, or maybe I should take their slug. Current user slug, then we will append a search for invitation where owner is current user. There's count plus one, that'll work. Count plus one, current users, slug append search. Why doesn't it like it? Cause it's a number, cause this is a number and this is a text. Mm -hmm. I just ran into that this morning. Isn't that funny? Matt, as can number you do a converted zero. To, can you do a converted to? There we go. Or converted to text. No, I, I formatted it as evaluates to a text when you format. So current oh. user slug. And then we can make sure, because the slug will be unique. And then we'll append the count of invitations. Right? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Okay, I like that solution. And then we'll do the owner equals current user and the used will be no. And only when we do a search for invitations that belong to that owner and the used is no. And the count is less than six because that's the limit that Jesus was after. And okay, copy this. It's, maybe we don't need to copy that, but we'll, you can handle the error or whatever, but this will create the new invitation at least. Now I just need to look at my database and see my users. So I have this user and this user has a slug, so that should work. So I will run this page as this user. All right, so I have six of them. So when I click this button, I should not get a seventh if I didn't my job right. Yep. Okay, we'll pause here. We'll come back and finish the rest of this, but let's go ahead and take a live question from Chris. Hey, thanks hey. for taking my question. Yeah, no worries. mind if I can share quickly? Please do. You can take over the share. Yeah, I got a new computer, so it's asking me to change my settings quick. Gotcha. Sorry, mm -hmm. apologies. That's okay.
Oh, here we go. Sorry. Welcome back. Great, thank you. All right, so it should work now. So I've been working on this project for an on and off for a while. Uh, COVID made us kind of adapt and change the way we do things as a business. So I stumbled across Bubble and here we are. Um, but what I'm trying to do here, if I, it should be a filtering option. I've got a repeating group full of like companies, uh, just a list of companies that are part of our, part of our app and our product offering. And what I want to be able to do is filter on a number of different like attributes related to them. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've created this pop-up, which is a pretty simple pop-up, but the top section is to filter by type. All of these businesses or companies are like in the craft beverage industry. So they're like breweries, vineyards, whatever. Um, and what okay. I want to be able to do is filter via a custom state, this repeating group based on those selections. So I have it working for like adding these members to the custom state and filtering below. But I, what I want to be able to do is also remove. So like if I click on winery, I'll get the one winery response, which is accurate. Um, brewery, I will also then include the breweries, but I want to be able to remove them um, as well. So every time I click on them, they would turn white, right? And then also remove from the custom state. Gotcha, okay. So I have, and it again, could just be me staring at this and, yeah, no, I, I understand. Uh, so uh, here's, I separated them into two. Um, I'll put them probably in one, like actual workflow at some point. Probably not. Is, two well, is probably the way to go. Okay, well, either way, um, I'll keep S2 is fine. But here's the one that works. It's adding an item to the custom state uh, only when it's not found in the current custom state currently. This works fine. Um, it's this one that doesn't seem to work for me. Got it. Um, it's it's because the um that actually like the logic I haven't gone through it carefully, but that looks right. The thing is, is you need the only when the condition on the workflow itself and not on the action inside of the workflow, because it's uh, trying to run both at the same time. Got it. That makes sense. Okay. So if I do that, and I don't necessarily need it here then. Correct. Yep, you wouldn't need it there then because it would be on the workflow. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt to have it there as long as they're the same condition, but. All right, that's why this one worked initially. And then the reason you would need the two different, um, you yeah. would need the two different workflows and not put them in the same workflow is for the same reason. It's because they, they were trying to run at the same time and were canceling each other out. Got it. Yep. Okay. Contains. That looks right. I knew it was something simple. Yeah, but it's always. Perfect. Okay, That's cool. awesome. Awesome. Great. Thank yeah, you. any other any other questions for today? Oh, actually, I was just running into that one just now. So I figured I would jump in quick. So okay. that's awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Awesome. And then um, are you familiar with our with our membership? Yes, I've kind of looked through the site and actually have seen a number of postings on the forums and things like that. And so, yes, awesome. um, yeah, very we'd helpful. Love to have you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. I'll take a look. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm going to share my screen again and we'll go back to, yep, to this. So we are successfully only creating an invitation code when we, uh, up to the point that we have at most six invitation codes that are pending per user. 
Now I'm gonna just fix this one here so that I can do the tabs, right? So if I go to, let's go to design. So when I click on this one, I want to set that state. Accepted equals no. And then maybe just so we can do this when the invitations accepted custom state is no, we'll make this bold. So we'll do the opposite on this one. When it's clicked, we'll set the state to yes. And then when invitations accepted is yes, we'll make it bold. So now we can see that we're looking at pending invitations. And then when I click accepted invitations, we don't have any because we haven't created the mechanism to accept invitations. So we'll go back to pending. So now we have to make it so that someone can actually redeem this, can use this Tayosa one code um, and we can mark this invitation as having been accepted. So we will go to another page, sign up by invitation. And just thinking through this, because this is a Canvas app, there's a bunch of things that have to be like done in order to for the sign up to work. So maybe it would make more sense for me to update the login page. So on page load, I'm gonna want to show a pop up. And the text here will be enter your code. And then I'll have an input. It'll be a text input and it won't have an initial content. And then we'll have a button. Here. And then we're going to make this so that the pop up itself uh, cannot be cannot be closed by pressing escape. So the only way to close this button is th or this pop up is through this button here. We're going to make this button not clickable uh, when the input a's value is empty. Actually, we'll, we'll just make this, um, I'm not gonna worry about the privacy rules of this, Jesus. So if you need, need guidance on the security of it, we can come back and circle back to make sure it's secure. But just for the, the sake of, of showing the functionality, we'll just go ahead and not worry about privacy rules. So we'll just search the invitations um, and we'll look for the invitation code that was put into the input here value. Um, and then also used equals no count is less than one. So we'll make this not clickable. 
So the only way they can get out of this pop-up to actually sign up and log in is if they have a valid invitation code. So that's your that's the the barrier to entry. Um, and then we want to show this pop-up on page load. Um, so page is loaded. And you probably wouldn't, you would not probably, you wouldn't put this on your login page. You would disable sign up on your login page and then separate your pages. You'd have a sign up page and a log in page separately. So we, what we wanna do is show this pop-up on page load. So now if I preview, it'll probably send me somewhere. I don't know, because I happen to be logged in at the moment. See, I can't get out of the pop-up. I have to enter. Oh, it sent me to the, it sent me to here because I'm already logged in. So I'm going to log out. And then I'm going to go to the login. Okay. So we're just going to check this one. Yep. So it recognized this. So it gave me the enter button. So that part's working. So then the next part is when I click enter, what are we going to do? Enter is we're going to make changes. Actually, all we're gonna do is close the pop-up for now. Then and then we'll set the state. create a new state called invitation code. Okay. And the reason, and we should probably actually set that state on a different element. We'll sign it. Well, We'll put the state on the sign up login instead. This is a bit of a workaround because my sign up login is actually reusable as opposed to being directly on the page, as opposed to being built on the page. So I'm going to have to create a state here for that in order to send it in. But this is all highly dependent, Jesus, on what your your app is designed like. So sign up invitation code, input days value. Perfect. So then on that reusable itself,
Weird. Does anybody else notice that? This is the login pages workflows. When I go to the reusable, it should be a different set of workflows. Bubbles being buggy. There we go. I was like, what happened to all my workflows? Okay, so I'm just gonna do a quick search here for action type, sign the user up on the current page. That way I can find the right workflow. So here we go. So when we sign the user up, that's when we wanna create, um, redeem the invitation code. So we'll make changes and the thing that will change is do a search for invitation where the invitation code equals the sign up login invitation code first item and change another field used will equal yes. So now, you can do other changes. If you wanted to give the person whose uh, invitation code it was credit, you could add it at this point. If you wanted to um, attribute this user, like when you sign the user up, you can give credit to the person, like you could say referred by a user and save the user whose invitation it was here. So um, this is just marking it. This is what's gonna switch it from that first repeating group we did to the second one where it's used, and which will also allow the person to create a new invitation code to send out to someone. So um, let's go ahead and preview. That's weird. It doesn't say they got together. Okay. So we're going to redeem Tyosa one, which should still be valid. So I click enter. So now it's going to let me sign up. So I'll sign up with Tyosa 23. Invited user. And it'll probably send me to the index page or whatever because I haven't set up anything to do differently. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go to this uh, invitation page. And I want to run it as that original user. And you can see now we have the accepted invitation over here and this one. So that's how I would build something like that out. Jesus, I hope that's helpful. Any questions from the gallery or thoughts or anything you want me to change or? And that looks super useful. Yeah, so if you just want 
only people like to be able, because now I can create the seventh code here but it still won't let me create an eighth one, right? Yeah. What were you saying, Thomas? I missed that. I was agreeing with Jay. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. So there are lots of different ways of accomplishing different things. This is one of them. I once did something similar for, um, we wanted to give premium credits to use certain features on the app to members when they had other members that they invited successfully signed up. And so that was how, um, that's how I went about it is give them a code or something, they come in and then you get the credit. Actually, the way I did it in that one was I gave every user an invitation link to send to another user that used URL parameters to recognize who invited them and gave them credit when they signed up that way. So, but yeah, that was fun. Any other questions or comments or concerns or topics before we wrap up our office hours section and move into our after hours section? No. All right. Well, I just want to uh, invite you if you are watching, if you would like to join us for um, office hours, please go sign up at pronocoders.com. Remember to please, if you're interested in our vault and getting access to videos that quickly and easily answer your questions, uh, please go and put your name on the list here at pronocoders.com slash vault into your email, you'll be among the first to know when we've launched on Friday. And don't forget, Justin and I will be back here at 6 p.m. Pacific time. You can watch on YouTube is probably the best place. You can ask your questions as Justin is using the new Flexbox editor to make some uh, messaging UI match happen. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll be back here tomorrow for office hours at 6 p.m. Pacific time. See you then.